us to like have a pause or a break between the two. I feel like we can just jump right into it though, since we've got a, a game show happening in like 25 minutes that uh, the live stream and everyone is uh, is really anxious about. So, uh, so first, thank you for uh, the the time for the Q and A. That those are a lot of fun for me. For folks that maybe don't know me in person, uh, I've, I've gotten the uh, I've had the privilege of hosting a WordPress Weekly podcast with Jeff Rowe about the past year or so. Uh, where I occasionally share some opinions and stuff, uh, but largely it's Jeff's show. But uh, so you'll uh, uh, when when uh, when David had uh, had asked me to uh, talk about the future of WordPress, uh, this is something that I, I think a lot about, uh, believe it or not. Uh, so this is me very quickly. This is me uh, pretending to be a world traveler uh, and looking somewhat tan. Uh, mostly just burnt, but uh, that was before the burn really settled in. Uh, th these are uh, some of my accolades. Some folks may know me from Buddy Press, BB Press, uh, security team. Uh, I uh, currently help maintain uh, the multi-site component, uh, roles and capabilities, and the options uh, components. They're generally pretty easy to maintain because there's not a lot of problems going on there, but when something comes up, I try to jump in whenever I can be helpful. Uh, and as a as sort of an admission, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, I think it's important to say that I am not the future of WordPress. Uh, and this is going to, the reason that I feel like this is an important admission, one is because I've been involved with WordPress for a really long time. There are folks that have been involved for longer than me that are in the audience today, but I've been involved since about 2006. I didn't actually make my WordPress.org account until 2008, at which point I used like a spam email sign up because I like, still was like hesitant about letting people uh, in and, and what, how, what kind of help and contributions I was going to give. Uh, but the, the reason that I wanted this slide to be in here is partially based on what David's question was, uh, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about in depth is that, uh, uh, and what Josefa mentioned also is, you know, how we got here is not how we're going to get where we're going next. Uh, and so that means that uh, historians like myself uh, need to shift. Uh, I, I play a different role than maybe I used to play. I'm maybe not as actively involved in track or patching or code reviews or things like that, but mentorship and leadership and leveling people up and including people and making people feel comfortable and safe and those kind of things. Uh, and so part of this me including this, is to say that uh, I'm not the future of WordPress. Uh, but the very past of WordCamp Miami, this uh, is the uh, very original, very first, but also still empty uh, sign-up wall from BarCamp uh, that was part of Future of Web Apps in 2008. Oh my god, you saved the photo. Isn't that cool? Yeah, so, uh, so this is where I first met David. Cafecito. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Cafecito. I, I saw that too. It's awesome. Uh, four speakers. This is almost like the first work in my hand. It's amazing, right? So uh, this is when I first met David, and David was giving a talk on Buddy Press. I totally was like, who is talking about Buddy Press? How do they know? Wait, who, where, what? Uh, and so got to hang out and watch David give like one of the very first talks that I had ever seen, not only just WordPress related, but very, Bunny Press very specifically related also. So I thought David would get a kick out of this and wanted to include a little bit of this, but uh, I don't live in Miami anymore, but I lived in Miami in 2008, 9, and 10. Uh, and uh, when I met David and we started talking about WordCamps and we were able to spin something up real fast, the bar camp was the first uh, WordCamp Miami and uh, eventually it evolved into WordCamps. It was uh, at a different campus, and now it's here. It's been really awesome ever since, but uh, I wanted to, to shout out to David. And here's me uh, giving my uh, buddy press talk, I think, the next year to what is very clearly a packed audience. Oh, and, <laughs> you look so cute. <laughs> yeah, I'm 20 pounds lighter and wearing a tie, right? Yeah. Uh, but I think, I think there were maybe 17 people in the audience at the time when I was giving this talk. Uh, still talking with my hands, and some, some things will never change. Uh, but the way that I knew that uh, Miami had welcomed me very thoroughly was the, uh, the little Honda race car that I had built for uh, 10 years. Eventually got stolen, and, uh, and, and that was how I knew I was for sure solidified as a Miami resident. Uh, the, uh, they found it an hour and a half north in Boynton Beach, totally stripped, uh, but that was when I knew, like, this is, uh, I, I've officially uh, found my, my second home. Uh, and uh, so 
over the past, course of the past 10 years, uh, I got married. My wife and I's anniversary is on, uh, on Monday, so I'm gonna fly out quick on Monday, so five years. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, with, without the, the love and support of our, of our better halves, where would we be? So I wanted to uh, include a shout out to her also. And then uh, Mr. Paul, I don't know if anybody has seen pictures of the dog, but uh, I adopted Paul uh, when I lived here in Miami uh, from, uh, there was a little uh, place that, I mean, sort of bred designer dogs, and he was the discount dog because he was twice the size of all of the other puppies. And I was like, that's my dude, I'm, you're coming with me. You don't have a choice, let's go. Uh, and so uh, a lot of my life today really involves around the time that I spent here. And so every year I try to come back, uh, David has uh, held buddy camps uh, for Buddy Press. I've tried to be there for every single one of them. Uh, and so it means a lot to me to be able to be here for you know, the 10 solid years of Board Camp Miami, but also 11 if we uh, include uh, the bar camp also. And so in that 10 years, we've done 32 BB Press releases, 103 Buddy Press releases. Those are minors and security re releases, so I'm kind of cheating. Uh, but we've cranked out some cool stuff in, uh, in the BBs in 10 years. And then uh, in the past two years, I have uh, learned a lot and volunteered for my local government and won in my village of East Troy, Wisconsin with uh, 32 more votes than the next guy. Uh, and so, uh, you know, you want to be the change uh, as much as you can. And so uh, there are a lot of correlations and things in common with open source software development, and open government, and trying to get things done. I have learned a lot, but I'm not here to talk to you uh, about that today. And uh, in the past six months, I've spent a lot of time building a piece of software called Sugar Calendar. It's a plugin from Pippin Williamson, has a few thousand users, and uh, this is probably the piece of software that I has the most complicated, brain-breaking code that I've ever written in my entire life. Also not here to talk about that, but I figured I would share, uh, since it was really cool and hard problems and we've solved some, some cool things. And we're trying to build a house, which if anybody has ever done it before, Oh my god, it's a terrible process, it's impossible, but it's almost done, it looks like a house, we might live in it someday soon. Uh, and so, uh, the future of WordPress, in my opinion, is a lot of things. Uh, I can talk about Gutenberg, we can talk about code, we can talk about uh, the, uh, the, the technology, but to, as, as much as I think for me 10 years ago that was really fascinating and a really important part of it, the older I get is the more that it all kind of feels the same to me. Uh, and so the technology is great, React is great, all those things. Uh, but I think that the future of WordPress really is driven with this room full of people, right? Like, this is the future of WordPress. Uh, and in order for us to get to where we're trying to go, we need something to be accessible. And so that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Here's a picture of what it meant to me for a little while when my uh, soon-to-be wife and I went out on like our first date after like having known each other for a really long time and I immediately broke my ankle roller skating. Uh, and so uh, a, a big part of accessibility uh, really is a, a, a mobility uh, issue. And so uh, the, the thing about accessibility is it's a very sprawling topic and it covers a lot of different things, but uh, WordPress for the most part uh, has always had a really intense focus on accessibility, but when things start to move very quickly, uh, a lot of the times it's hard to do all of those things at once when things are changing all the time. And so, uh, ex this is also me, uh, and this is a another admission of all the things that make being alive difficult, right? And so when it comes to accessibility, uh, things like screen brightness, things like dark mode, things like uh, audio-visual issues, like, Photophobia, well, I wore sunglasses most of the day, not because I think it's cool to wear sunglasses in Florida, but because the sun hurts my eyeballs, and so it's easier for me to have sunglasses on. Uh, this is a picture of me when I had a sleep study just to figure out, like, do you know how to sleep? <laughs> the answer is no. I have no idea how to sleep correctly. Uh, I don't have sleep apnea, which is a lot of people suffer from, but uh, a lot of those things correlate to cognitive concerns, uh, like things that make uh, attention deficit difficult, things that make learning difficult, things that make navigating WordPress admin difficult, picking a theme, picking one of 60,000 plugins. If you haven't slept well and you've got a broken leg and you can't get out of bed and your arm doesn't work, trying to find a plugin to solve the problem that you want, you have other barriers and hurdles in place uh, that frankly the open source version and the community of WordPress has a responsibility to try and make this easy and solve these problems for folks. 
I'm going to get that picture off the screen because it's weird that it's been there so long. Uh, and so these are my relatives, right? And so I can tell you firsthand, I mean, this is probably the last time that we were together. This was 10 years ago where we pretended to be happy. Uh, but, uh, but I've been here. I mean, I am the 2.0 version of both of my parents, right? I mean, aside from my, my mother's anxiety and my father's, you know, typical old guy rage on things that doesn't make any sense. Uh, the future is, is my niece and nephew. I mean, and, and my, my dad is strangling the poor kid, which is like a weird thing, but... Uh, you know, I guess that's that's been bad. Uh, but they, they're not the future either, but they do have the same sort of problems that I would have when it comes to working a device, not being internet natives, uh, not being comfortable publishing uh, their thoughts or ideas. Like, uh, there are a lot of hurdles that folks need to get over just to be able to get to the point where they're comfortable blogging something or publishing something online. Uh, and so, uh, I, this is another one of those examples. Uh, this is Mark Jakewith, a very old-time uh, historian, WordPress lead developer. Uh, but imagine carrying a baby and trying to use your phone. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, you have one hand available to you, plus you're distracted, uh, and you don't want to drop either of the things in your hand because they're very important to you, right? Uh, and so I also, I typed Dvorak. Uh, I switched about 10 years ago to typing Dvorak. And so it's important that things like shortcut keys work correctly. I have apps on my Mac that are like locked into QWERTY mode, where in order for me to copy and paste, it's like the, it's this wrong key in the wrong letter in the wrong place. Uh, and then uh, being tall just kind of means I don't fit in a lot of places like an airplane. Uh, and so there are just things that make us different as individuals and unique and beautiful people uh, that are all trying to navigate WordPress all at the same time. Uh, I also think that the future is being compassionate to one another. Part of accessibility, part of diversity and inclusion uh, is just uh, understanding where people are at at the time. So here is a picture of the bill I got after I broke my ankle. So uh, imagine trying to get work done when you're sitting on $8,000 that you have to pay to try and uh, cover the bills. Uh, you still have to heal for eight weeks in a cast. Uh, you got uh, this, well, that's Norcross, it's hip, but there's my ankle. Uh, and so, you know, uh, limping around, trying to get from work camp to work camp. Try to drive your uh, six-speed car uh, with pins in your ankle. Uh, these are examples of the types of issues that folks are using on the web and navigating. These are my personal examples uh, of, amongst the unlimited amount of them that there are. Uh, that we are tasked with solving for 34% of the web, the folks that are using WordPress and publishing with it. Uh, I also think and have some examples of where uh, the future of WordPress will involve some compromise. There's a Gutenberg joke in there, but I'm not going to make it. Uh, and this is uh, my sister compromising with me with the fact that I exist. This is probably the last time that we were happy together at the beach. Uh, so there's some compromise there. Uh, this is also another very prolific, long-time WordPress, BuddyPress uh, contributor. This is Boone Gerges. Uh, we both grew up in Wisconsin. He's in the Appleton area. I grew up in, around Lake Geneva and East Troy. Uh, we have lots of the same childhood stories, memories, growing up in the very same areas. We do not agree on a whole heck of a lot, though. And so when it comes to how things happen in BuddyPress or the approach that we make or the code that we write or what's important, uh, we have a tendency to compromise with one another to say, okay, I see what you're saying, I don't agree, but that is okay, we're going to solve this problem together. And so as we have more teams, as we have more people contributing, we have different people from different backgrounds, uh, different experiences, that we are going to have to compromise uh, what we think is important. Uh, and we're going to have to decide what the priority is, uh, and it might not always be what I want it to be or what you want it to be. But we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to compromise. And this was the very first, I think, maybe second kind of WordCamp Milwaukee uh, in like a ramshackle pole bar building uh, that was like a co-working kind of space that someone had at the time just to make it work. Uh, and this was one of those decisions where it was like, I don't know that we want to do this here, but I guess. I guess, I guess, what are you gonna do? Let's, let's make it work. Let's do what we can with what we have. Uh, it was pretty fun, I mean, it was still a great time, but when you see it, you're like, well, this is not, how, how no one's gonna wanna come to this. It's kinda, it doesn't feel safe at all. Uh, and then when I think of actually the work that gets done when it comes to making WordPress, 
this is a, a, a few of the issues on WordPress Track. Track is a piece of software that is a project management tool that uh, the WordPress community uses to make WordPress. We also use it for BuddyPress and BBPress. These are some of the issues that I've been involved in, or if you look in the comments, I am trying to be compassionate and trying to compromise. Uh, not always good at it, still learning, uh, but uh, there is a lot of activity that is generated from every bug, enhancement, uh, task issue that happens. And so this is just a little bit of that. Uh, and you see I dark mode everything. Like, I mean, I'm not like, I'm not living in like the inverted world yet or like everything is orange, but uh, dark mode, the black, I think is, uh, is a lot nicer. And so on that end, I think a major portion of the future of WordPress is a heavy emphasis on design. Uh, the design of WP Admin uh, got us here for a little while. My favorite like version, I should have put a screenshot in it, uh, and Mark has like a way better screenshot of like what could have been that I was going to include, but I didn't, and I probably should have. Uh, but I really like the old, kind of grimy looking WordPress admin. There's more lines, there's more, uh, it just, it feels nostalgic to me. Uh, but we're probably about due for another redesign of WordPress admin. Not that everyone wants to relearn a whole new design for things, because that's not real pleasant either. But how do you iterate on something like Apple does or Porsche does? It's kind of the same car every year. It's kind of the same iPhone every year, but it's a little bit better. Uh, it's familiar, uh, it's welcoming, uh, and you want it, right? Like it's, a, it's cool enough where you want the next thing. And so what is the future of WordPress admin design that is those things? How do we, how do we make that happen? And so uh, you know, on WordPress.org, we have a list of all of the powerful features that WordPress comes with, but uh, frankly, a lot of these kind of feel like they were things that were kind of brought up at the time that were going to fit the square, uh, but they don't have a he heavy emphasis on uh, really the, the usability or the design of, uh, or the accessibility of what, how people actually interact with WordPress as an application. Uh, and I wanted to give a hat tip to the folks uh, from Flywheel that uh, work on a piece of software called Local, which in my opinion is a good example of a pretty application that uh, does a, a lot of things very well, that looks kind of like what we expect for it to look like, uh, while under the hood having super powerful things that like developers would need to do cool things without it being really intimidating for people. Uh, this, in my opinion, is like a really good example of folks that have tried really hard to, to do a really good job focusing on uh, getting the design right for what they're building. Uh, and then Gutenberg, which, uh, love it or hate it, kind of has a, a good look and feel to it as an, a, an editor for the masses. Uh, it might not be what we're used to with the classic editor, but it is, all the pieces are there using a front-end only framework that doesn't directly need to talk to WordPress for any reason. Uh, it gives us the middleware, it gives us some cushion so that other projects would be able to use this interface if they wanted to. And so this is the first version of that. By no means does that mean that this is the last. Uh, this will need to be iterated on. Uh, including in design, I think that there are some places on WordPress.org specifically that love or hate how kind of code, coding, developer-y looking that they are, kind of do a great job at giving you the bare minimum of what you need to get the job done without getting in your way. And so translate.wordpress.org is powered by a piece of software called Glockpress. I don't know if there are any like app builders, like Apple apps or Android apps, but trying to get those translated uh, is not pleasant. It's not any better than what we have with Glockpress uh, to get languages, uh, to make your plugin or your theme uh, multilingual or have it have uh, multiple uh, translations in it. Our tool kind of feels okay to me. Does it need a refresh when everything else gets redesigned? I think probably. Uh, the same as the forums do, right? Like the forums are kind of still using my basic base CSS from BBPress 2 that I put out in 2010. It's been iterated and, and, and built on top of, but it's kind of still the same thing. And so are we due for nicer forums? I think probably. Uh, and same with profiles. I've talked about profiles for a long time, but every once in a while we chip away at it. They get a little bit different. They're BuddyPress powered, but we don't really expose that. It's not a big deal. But we should make profiles, I think, uh, something that shares a little bit more of the accolades and the experiences uh, of what you're doing all across WordPress.org, translations and those kind of things. These are areas of uh, possible design improvements that uh, 
we are all oh, capable of owning. We all get to write the code for all of these things. It's all open source on meta.track.wordpress.org. I know that's like easy to say and not easy to work on, but we should still design the, the way that we work on all those things. Uh, and then if I think of places in WordPress admin that could use a little bit of a refresh, the settings pages are still using like a table-based layout from a super long time ago. The settings API still uses that. Uh, the network uh, settings don't use the settings API. Uh, there are a lot of things in settings specifically uh, that force plugin developers to just roll their own every single time. Uh, and so that is an area of not just kind of like design, pretty design, but architectural design where WordPress could see some improvement. Uh, the future is fun, and we're here having fun, right? Look at all of the WordCamps that happen all year. This is fun everywhere happening, just like this all over the world. Multiple countries, multiple days, uh, all the time. Uh, David doing buddy camps was fun for me, uh, but I think it was kind of a, a good example of taking the WordCamp idea, uh, keeping it still within the same uh, family or ecosystem, but doing something different. There is uh, WordCamps for publishers, there's WordCampus, uh, there are other types of events that are happening that are not uh, exactly this, but that are sort of forks or, uh, or, or branches of how we do work camps. And they are great ways to learn, to meet people, hang out, talk about WordPress, and just kind of generally have fun. Uh, and then where would I be without posting a uh, four-player Pac-Man Battle Royale? <laughs> like, this is the other part of the reason why I come to WordCamp Miami, is to play Pac-Man Battle Royale at David Buster's. If you have not played it, you have to play it. It's like the coolest thing ever. It's four people playing Pac-Man against each other. It's incredible. That's fun for me. And lastly, uh, the future is collaboration. Uh, and what I mean by that is sort of internal and external. Externally, there are many other open source projects uh, similarly licensed to WordPress or not uh, that are trying to solve similar problems to WordPress. Django, Drupal, Joomla. Uh, there are part, we are partners, we are allies in trying to get the web to be a better, more open place. Uh, and so it is not infrequent that the WordPress security team will work with other teams that have similar security issues in escaping, in MySQL query things, and all sorts of things that uh, are kind of inherited and similar across projects that this will need to happen more. I think something like Gutenberg makes that easier because everyone can start to publish using a similar interface, which makes it easier to kind of go and navigate between platforms, but that gets to act as a bridge to helping everyone collaborate cross project. Uh, but it is also internally for WordPress.org and all the teams specifically. There are a ton of teams now. These are separate teams with separate leaders and separate people working on separate initiatives that all come together at some point to make a WordPress release happen. And so this type of collaboration is relatively new to our community, kind of. We've had component maintainers, we've had developers, we've had designers, but now we're really starting to split apart and give some autonomy and trust to teams of people to work on things kind of without a whole lot of strict guidance. Arguably, there are teams like the multi-site team that has been able to kind of do that a little bit for a long time now, uh, but other teams uh, like Menus or Gutenberg or anything else, uh, they're going to have to collaborate with one another. Uh, and the bigger that those teams get, the only thing that's gonna happen is they're gonna break apart. We, 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 we monolith and then we microservice. We bring everything together up into one and we break it all back apart again. And so every team that we have that joins up and is 50 people, they're gonna go, well now we need to be five teams. And those teams are gonna break apart. They're gonna go, hey, we're this big team again. And they're gonna keep breaking apart. And so we're only going to watch that tree grow. It's only going to get deeper and we're going to have to collaborate with one another. And lastly, I wanted to give two shouts out. One to a project called GraphQL, which is dope. Uh, it's a piece of software I buy some Facebook folks uh, that uh, WordPress has a REST API in it right now. There is a plugin called WP GraphQL that brings GraphQL to WordPress. In my opinion, GraphQL is like a better experience for integrating an external application with a, or a headless WordPress experience. Uh, to an application, GraphQL is the better way to do it. Uh, an example of that is this. I don't know what it looks like on the big screen, probably not super awesome, but the idea with it is that you can, uh, instead of making a thousand little REST requests out to get all of your application data, you just make one or two or whatever you need and you shape it exactly the way you want and it just gives it to you back. 
And so Facebook built this because they have intense social graphs. Friends of friends, people that you've blocked, people that have blocked you, activity streams and feeds that you've subscribed to that you don't follow, that you're not friends with, and so on. And so they were doing all these random REST requests to try and get all this intersection of data, and they said, let's kibosh that, we'll build something that lives on top of that. And we have that with WordPress. We have posts, we have comments, we have users, we have taxonomies and terms, forums, topics, replies, WooCommerce products, feedback, reviews, and on and on and on. GraphQL connects all of those things together. It is like a better developer future, plus it also helps all of the front end designers and developers that are looking to build sort of an easier application without all the endpoints coming into it. And lastly, this is something that most people don't know about use, except it's got like thousands of follows on GitHub, uh, is a project called Framework 7. Uh, the idea with it is it is a UI, kind of like you're familiar with with Twitter Bootstrap, except its job is to look exactly like iOS or uh, Android or anything else on the web. And so if you want to build a native looking feeling application on the web, Framework 7 is killer. Because it comes with the styling, all the cards, all the UI that you need for pop-ups, messages, menus, all those things uh, in one package. Open source, MIT license, uh, and it is sweet, super solid, very fluid, uh, and uh, that is like my shout out to those two other projects. And so in my opinion, this is really truly the solid future for WordPress like forever. We need all of these things all the time. Uh, accessibility is a huge, 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 huge deal. Uh, all the way down to collaboration to get any of that stuff done. And then uh, democratize publishing, y'all. Uh, that's what we are here for. We are here to uh, try and give everyone freedom to publish on the web, whatever their uh, ideas and concerns are. And so I don't know if I'm five minutes over. Are there questions? Are we game time? What do you want to do, David? Uh, how about two questions? Thank you. Thank you. 60 seconds apiece. Okay, speed round. Anybody have a question? I don't see any hands. No? Nothing? Nothing. Wait, what? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, one. Wait, what? Type one that. Oh, I had a typo? Aww. Oh. Oh no, I think it auto-corrected to that. So I, it's not my fault. Maybe it's my fault, I should have noticed it. Uh, sorry about that, it's not on purpose. I really, I really truly typed it, and then it switched it on me, and I was like, oh, that doesn't look right, but okay. And then I just copied it over. I think you're all right. Sorry about that. When are you gonna declare for 2020? Uh, declare for 2020, nobody wants that. Yeah, nobody wants me to do that. <laughs> I am not ready for that. Nobody wants that. Uh, anything else? Uh, can we get a, like a group shot of you before we start the game show? Yes. All right, let's take a group shot when the game show starts. Thank you, everybody.